Admin, you son of a bitch! What's wrong, buddy? Fly Ranger LARPing got you a little soft? Okay, okay, old buddy. All right. Rescue mission. Team of uh, Task Force 420 operatives went down behind me lines. You got a pilot? Pilot. Dr. Kim Lee Sue. I can get you boys in there. What are you looking for, boss? Telltale Shimmer? Nah, he just looks like a piece of shit. Yeah. Smooth. Yeah, that's work for Predator. If you ever like the look of retro guns, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is absolutely out of control. Get in there. That's what makes this channel amazing. Now, the sponsor for this channel is Brownells. Go down there, check out the discounts. Big thank you to them. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. A big thank you to them. Now, when it comes to NordVPN, it makes your internet browsing experience just a little bit more safe and a little bit more private, and those are great things to have. Now, what's cool about NordVPN is it is among the fastest out there with over 5,100 servers in over 60 different countries. So no matter where you are, you're gonna have fast speeds. Let's say you're traveling, you're in an area where you can't watch a certain show. You can easily connect, whether that's with one click to get the VPN going, or whether you just have it automatically connect whenever you turn on your computer. The point is, NordVPN will support you in everything that you need. Guys, go check them out at nordvpn.com forward slash grand. And of course, you'll get two years with uh, an extra four months at a really cheap price with my discount code, which is grand. Go check them out, guys. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, blood diamond carbines. Today, we're gonna be talking about a very interesting topic, and that is going to be on retro guns. Why are they making a comeback? These are some pretty good questions, don't you think? Yeah, it's something that I always like to dive into, um, you know, having a social media presence now. Why are these retro rifles coming back into play? <laughs> there, there's a lot to it, I think. I mean, you know, we talked about this a little bit, but I think there are kind of three main things that are playing into it. Mm. So let's get into those things. Let's talk about why I think these retro guns are making a kind of a comeback. And then also um, we'll talk a little bit about some of the sweet 
sweet setups that we have right here. Sound good to you? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so, you know, one of the first things that we talked about and why I think these retro rifles are making a comeback is going to be a shifting goalpost. Mm -hmm. So, let's take, you know, the original M16, M4, AR-15, whatever, whatever, right? Right. We had iron sights. Awesome. Great. Uh, eventually, they were upgraded to red dot optics, mm -hmm. and then eventually we began to see um, that it was realized that these red dot optics were, of course, better than just using iron sights, right? right? And they're they're easier to use. In many cases, they're actually tougher. Mm -hmm. And so a couple things happened. They were like, okay, red dot sights are now it. We don't need the carry handle anymore. So they deleted that carry handle. Mm -hmm. Now, when they deleted that carry handle, that actually caused some problems with the upper receiver. So then they're like, okay, a couple problems with that upper receiver, but now, of course, we have a red dot at the absolute height pinnacle of, of guns right there. Everyone's like, right. all right, cool. So everyone gets the absolute height red dot optic. And then they're like, sorry, guys. <laughs> we <laughs> we kind of fucked up a little bit. Yeah. Lower one third. Yeah. See, so yeah, I guess everyone's like, oh, that makes sense. You know, a little bit higher, a little yeah. bit more natural head position. And then they're like, <laughs> one seven oh, guys. Promise we're done. Uh, never mind. The problem is that is that you're not upright enough here shooting. So we're gonna go to a skyscraper mount. That mm. way you can have a nice upright head position. And people are like, God damn it, that is the exact <laughs> same height circle. as a yeah. optic on top of a carry handle. So in my mind, there's this this idea that you know this goalpost has shifted so far that it's just gone back to right where it originally was, and people are just kind of frustrated. They're like, all that to go back to a very expensive <laughs> mount to do what could have been done with like a fifteen dollar carry handle mount. And yeah. They're like you know, fuck everything. Like, I'm just done. Yeah, it's like they're buying these, like, fancy skyscraper, <laughs> like, and then it's like, hey, listen, you can buy these from a surplus. Oh, listen, you could also shoot yeah. passive MVGs through that as well. Yeah. No, absolutely yeah. no problem. And, and, you know, it comes down to other things too, right? That handguard right there. Admin, is there anything wrong with that handguard? Wait, you're going to say yes. I'm going to say no, but yes. Okay. So why is there something wrong with the handguard? What's wrong it's with gonna it? It's not going to retain zero. Fine. If you want to mount your dot to it, if you want to have a good zeroed, like infrared a, laser. Yeah, so an infrared laser, for example, <laughs> right? So then everyone, then they're like, hey, you need to have a solid rail mm -hmm. because you got to hold zero. Everyone's like, oh, shit, what do we need? They're like, yeah. pick a tinny. All the way. Daniel Fence comes to rescue. Super heavy rail. Does do a lot of good things. Free floating was definitely an improvement on an AR-15. And they're like, we need these because we need to hold zero. And then they're like, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we got it wrong, guys. Never mind. Key mod, yeah. actually way better. This way it's a little bit lighter, but we get a lot of the same benefits. Everyone's like, oh, okay. And then they're like, key mod is a little weak. That's a bad on us. M lock, guys. And everyone's like, okay, M lock. So we get M lock, and then they're like, the military does the test on the M lock, and they're like, never mind, the M lock doesn't hold zero with an IR laser. And everyone's like, whoa. And they're like, it doesn't matter though, because you don't need an IR laser. Everyone just shoots passive now, so you don't need the IR <laughs> laser. And everyone's like, what the hell? So it's this idea that now we've gone full circle. So it's mm. two things. We have this shifting goalpost and we have this full circle. It's like, you need a really high red dot. And then they're like, uh, it just comes back to the carry handle. And then, hey, you need to have a strong rail because it needs to be able to retain, you know, zero for IR lasers. And then eventually they're like, uh, you yeah, actually don't need to retain zero. And people are like, so you just tell me I, I could just use like an IR light on taped to the side of a handguard and I'm okay. And they're like, yeah, but you're not free floating. It's like, I get it. Right. You know, free float reels are great and they do maintain heat better. But, and I think it comes back to it, right? It's this idea that for everything that changes, nothing really changes. No, nothing's it, new under the sun. Exactly. And, and, you know, it should be noted, there of course had been many good upgrades to the AR-15 platform from LMT bolts to, you know, CAC bolts. Like lots of good things have been mm -hmm. done. But when it comes to like how a rifle is set up, in a lot of ways, I, I see that kind of cyclical nature, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, think about when you were like researching guns and you saw like the guys who were, you know, in Black Hawk Down, like the actual thing. When you look at their rifles, you're like, and their setups, you're like, that's pretty much us, just older tech. Yeah, it's a little more dated. Yeah, there, there's nothing that's really changed here. Now, you know, besides those two things that I've talked about, what's another consideration you think that's really driving this kind of push towards retro rifles? I think it's just a kind of return to the ways of the old. Yeah. Why you do you know? think that's happening? Well, I think we're maybe getting nostalgic. Maybe we're yeah. looking at our past. Um, me personally, I look at these guns as it kind of comes from an era of, you know, some OG guys that were putting some putting some work in like those guys from the Black Hawk era. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? 
with those Delta guys going around the 80s, 90s, dropping bodies all with carry handles. Yeah, they're doing a great job. There is an aggressive aesthetic to this. <laughs> and, they, and they nailed it down. 100%, man. I, I definitely agree. And there, there's also this, this idea that, you know, these guns were are, are just as, in some cases, more effective than weapons that we currently have, right? Because, again, we had that thing where it's like, all right, 20-inch AR. Good. And then they're like... Needs to be shorter, guys. They're like, yeah, we have rooms to clear. Yep, keeps getting yeah. shorter and shorter. And they got to 10 3, and they're like, Mark 18. Everyone's like, okay. And then they're like, our bad. It chews up an extractor on like 5,000 <laughs> rounds, guys. You might want to go a little bit longer. And so everyone kind of keeps just, you know, everything comes back. You know what I mean? And, and it should be noted, like, this 20 inch M16 clone right here, mm. this thing, like, I don't know if you fired a 20 inch clone, but they have like zero recoil. Very buttered. Like, yeah, extremely buttered. You want to shoot it, man? I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and go ahead and put on your pro. Would you like to shoot my rifle? I would love to. A little rifle swap? Yeah, a little rifle swap. This is feeling a little culty. Um, you're going to tell me that I can't shoot my rifle soon, that only you can shoot rifles? <laughs> it's going to get a little David bit weird. Rifle crash? <laughs> Alright, going hot. Oh, that's really smooth. Yeah, I have that feel for you. It's like zero recoil. Yeah, keep going, man. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful, right? Let me, let me, try, let me yeah. try a little bad boy right here. I have a lot of time on short barreled guns. I hope so. <laughs> Carry on with covers. Excuse me. Dot covers. Man. You know what? feels just as good and of course we are using modern components in in these uh, rifles right here but it kind of brings me back to my point which is you know for everything that changes you know a lot of things kind of remain the same there, there's definitely been a lot of innovation like I talked about happening but at the same time there is nothing wrong with running an older weapon you know I know there's been a lot of pressure for a lot of people to be like okay you need the latest and greatest you must have a 14.5 bcm or 14.5 cac but mm -hmm. really for the guy out there with like a colt sp1 just m16 clone like you're good to go Dude, bro that thing so for where, I, <laughs> where i come from now you live in a different environment there's actually trees around here <laughs> there's trees right if you can see in the background there's trees in arizona where i'm where, you know i'm based out of not based out of something in the military in arizona where i'm from um a lot you're of de open, you're a desert rat i'm a desert rat yeah. a lot of open terrain <laughs> So it's like, I do love my, you know, 10-5 gun, mm -hmm. but for the terrain and environment, a 20 inch actually goes pretty hard. Like it's gonna be very fantastic for my environment. There's a lot of shrubs and bushes and mm -hmm. wide open visual line of sight, so. 100% man. So, you know, with these kind of things being said, you know, I'm sure there's probably more reasons that we haven't touched upon why retro rifles have kind of come about. But ultimately for me, it comes down to the fact that Quite frankly, retro rifles work extremely well. The builds are very simple. They're typically cheaper to put together unless you're using clone parts and you're cloning right. a weapon. But, and you have just a very effective weapon. So with that being said, man, um, do you wanna go through some of our guns, talk yes. a little bit to yeah, our setups and how they work and you know some of these older mounting methods for different optics and stuff? Okay, so with everything that's being said, man, do you wanna go ahead and- Hey, hold on, I'm getting a, I'm getting a call from Travis. Oh yeah, go ahead. Travis Haley. <laughs> okay, yeah, of course. All right, Mike, let's break it down. Oh, hey, Travis. Uh, kinetically, what we're doing here is uh, we're looking at some basic rifle. Okay. okay, yeah. Now, I spent a lot of time holding the rifle, okay? Yeah. Very familiar feelings to guys like you, yeah, guys like me, yeah. Travis Haley, right? Yeah. Uh, so, breaking it down kinesthetically, okay? Yeah. All right, hold your arm out like this. Okay. We'll do it like this. Okay. Do it like this. Do it like this. <laughs> Back at you, all right? <laughs> now, so straight lines are strong, angular yeah. are weak, yeah. okay? Now, we all know this. Kinesthetically, kinesthetically, and a lot of uh, movements, right, breaking this down, doing our gunfighter science. Okay, so when you get on this gun, all right, this is your fighting platform, all right. Now this is an older style gun. I use this gun, you know, a lot in my time uh, in certain non-permissive environments, okay? Of course. So when you get on the gun, you snap into it, all right? Now one thing you're noticing is your biomechanics, you get into this fighting stance, okay? Now, keep it together, Mike. Sorry, now, my bad. Now, Not bad, I'm just really impressed. Now you're tall folks on that gun, all right, when you get into that flying stance. All right, now I want you to, uh, yeah. I, want you, I want you to like uh, fall forward for me, okay? Okay. No, at me, at me. Oh, oh at my me, bad, my bad, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, right, all right, cool, yeah, so that's your fighting stance, all right? You're a big guy, okay? Yeah, thank you. So. Moon hitting the gym. Oh, I think, I think Travis is about to take off right now. Oh, okay, yeah, oh, yeah sure. Okay. See you later, Travis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, man, tell us a little bit about your gun here, dude. 
Travis, don't kill me. All right, so <laughs> what, what inspired you to build it like this? All right, well, now if you don't know anything about me, which you probably don't, um, big fan of the movie Blood Diamond. Mm -hmm. This was one of those guns that became um, like free real estate in my head that I had to build. <laughs> yeah, of course. It took up a lot of real estate in there. I saw it in the movie and I was like, I know nothing about like what's going on. So I started researching the conflicts and it like just sparked this interest. But then I saw like the last 15 seconds and you'll see them more you research the movie, but these car 15s make an appearance in the Blood Diamond movie. Leonardo DiCaprio, Danny Archer, he picks up one of these guns after he gets to a gunfight. Yada, 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 exposition aside. Yeah. But for whatever reason, it was one of those guns where I was like, I have to build that. And it, I, I get it, same thing with this. It became yeah. a driving obsession. Yeah. And I can't explain it. And that's, it, it's... I get it. Can you show us what, what, what went into it? Right. So now, I know I can already hear your comment section taken away. But they're gone. Um, they're gone. They're off That's on the gun own. from Black Hawk Down too. Yes, I know. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So I'm sure there's a... I like the woodland scheme to match. Dude, it's actually perfect. Yeah. Like, like the jungle with right K&W. So what's going on right here now? Breaking it down. So this isn't a 100% perfect clone. Of course. Okay. Yeah. The biggest thing is going to be this moderator, the Colt 607 moderator. Mm -hmm. This was to get close. The ones in the movie are actually a little bit longer. Okay. Um, now, working down, we're going tip the butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's come back to haunt me. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm made a hell of my own and, uh, making. Yes. I live in, I, yeah, you, you live in your hell. You live in a prison of your own. <laughs> yeah. So we have our Colt 607 moderator. Moving yeah. down, we have a, um, now this is a faux Surefire Weaver mount. Now, the reason I did this is that they are kind of hard to get. And expensive. They're they're floating around the internet. You can find them, but to get this to fit between the barrel and the gas block, you really have to grind that down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so experimental wise, I did a quick grind on one and uh, threw it in there. And I still have the OG Surefire 660 mount if I wanted to come back to it. Yeah. Nonetheless, I digress. This is going to be a Surefire 660 attached to the Efo Weaver mount. Interesting thing about this 660 is that I replaced the original light, the, the bulb in there, yeah, uh, and replaced it with a Malkov device. Oh, did you? Yes. Nice. So yeah. that's going to be a little bit better when you want to start running the lumens because the, the lemons on the uh, oh shoot, the, the lemons. <laughs> I got lemons, right? Yeah, you got lumens. Lumens for days. Yeah, lumens for days, right? As opposed to the OG Surefire 66. Of course. Right? All right, now tape switch, all that classic Brownells, uh, Brownells handguard, hey. and. <laughs> And then this is gonna be, I wanna say, maybe a cold I, I wanna now? talk to this, cause, so this is interesting. Right. We, I, you've probably seen this a bunch, but uh, the sling, we have to talk to it, right? I right. love these older sling setups because, you know, everybody's using uh, cuties and cuties are great. Um, cuties make noise too. Um, using paracord, a very simple modification right. if you wanna come in here and take a look. Um, is this a canteen strap? Just a canteen strap. It's I like six it. or eight bucks. I, I love it. I love yeah. it. So this is an effective setup. You don't have to spend a lot to make something that's functional. Um, and, and these are awesome. I love paracord can setups. You, can you show them your setup? So yeah, this, sure. This, so if you could look at... Um, oh, this sling. This sling right here. Yeah. So, so if you, if yeah. you come take a look. Um, so of course, it's a little bit different on our M203 setup. So we do have... The sling mount right there, all I've done is I've attached 550 right up here. Right. That 550 comes back, and then of course the problem with, and I can't take uh, credit for this at all, but the problem with the uh, M16 butt sock is mm -hmm. that of course, it's not very easy to have it in a top position. So what a lot of guys did is they did a girth hitch here at the bottom, they did a square at the top, and then they attached their sling direct to that. Then they of course duct taped all that to make sure it wasn't gonna move anywhere and keep that sling in that top position. So it's a very simple modification. Um, but again, you don't have to buy anything huge and bulky. You can honestly just make it with paracord and duct tape and it's gonna work perfect. Guys did it for 20 plus years before the industry caught up and started making industry specific products. That's why I kind of like these builds. You they, know? Were, they were doing this stuff before we were born. It, precisely, they've been yeah. doing it before we were born and the point is, is like, you, you innovate, right? Mm -hmm. This is this is a very simple modification, right. but I mean, it costs you probably next to nothing. So like ten bucks. Ten bucks. That's why I love that stuff. Now, hold on, real quick. Yeah. So Go ahead. I want to dive into this real quick. The new little nuances of gun guy culture is that I would not recommend you running like a little hook like this if you are going to do stuff, especially with the whole helicopter thing you're running. Oh yeah, yeah. I, there was there's a little pucker factor when I was like. Because these aren't perfectly locked in, right? Yep. And it's like, I don't want to lose my rifle. Time to duct tape around them, man. I know, Make yeah. sure they don't go anywhere. So how, how Mike has his set up with it running through the actual loop. Mm -hmm. And again, I can't take uh, credit for this. This is an old Ranger technique, and I'm sure it probably goes even further back than that. But mm -hmm. um, I've talked to a lot of guys who yeah. um, 
were just giants of men who told me about this setup and I had to do it. I think, I heard, I think I heard they were rocking that in the Civil War. <laughs> yeah, only back then. Use uh, 100 mile per hour <laughs> tape. Just <laughs> Yeah, some high speed guys, man. It's pretty normal. Yeah. Um, now, I kind of want to go back to um, our optic setups for a second and yeah. kind of talk about it because I think this is interesting. Now, in the case of mine, I do have a detachable carry handle and the whole reason I have it set up like this is um, I wanted to show what you can do. So mm -hmm. we have our carry handle right here. And then I have that gooseneck mount with yes. an old Trijicon reflex sight. And in fact, if you look at it, it is called an ACOG, Advanced Combat uh, Optical Gun Sight. So uh, this is the not the original ACOG, but it's just one of the many Trijicon products, but it uh, is powered by the fucking sun. So that means it just never goes out now. Of course, the tritium is for night, so a little dim now, obviously. Right. But during the day, good to go, and it's just an awesome optic. You know, of course, optics nowadays, like that, you know, uh, Aimpoint Pro, yeah. of course a better optic, but some of these older optics, there really isn't anything wrong with them. They're very mechanically simple and they just work really well. Now with this one, what's cool about this particular mount and why I wanted to show these two um, in comparison is that I can sight through this carry handle sight right here with mm. this mount on. In addition to that, I'm able then to line up the iron sights and I can get that thing zeroed very easily. And then when I get up and pick up on the gun, it's about a lower one third kind of view through it. So it's a very comfortable optic to shoot through. It's very comfy, mm. you shot it. Yeah. It feels really good. It's a good ride. It's a good ride. Now, let's compare that to yours, right. which is a very tall optic, very which tall. is all the rage. The, all the rage right now, all the, all the night vision fanboys, everyone's chasing the height, because when you're, the reason we call it passive aiming, right, is that you have your nods down and you're not using any laser or IR. You're just looking through, or you could use IR, nuances. You could look through, and you're, the idea is you're putting a tube through a tube to get your dot acquisition, essentially what it is, right? So. Exactly. A little, little signature uh, IR wise, in case right. somebody else has IR yeah, as well. In case the bad guys have as well. Yeah, you never know, yeah. especially nowadays. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, going from there, to talk a little bit about this before we kind of go too far as it rains, Pacific mm -hmm. Northwest. Now, for this, and everyone is asking me, what handguard is this? Because they see the Modern Warfare, they yes. don't know. This is a handguard that is specific to the M203. So we do have an M203 40 millimeter grenade launcher here on the bottom. And, uh, you know, just a little bit of extra heat on you. Mm. You know, um, of course, it is lighter to carry an off-board grenade launcher on you, but at the same time, I like having it there, and it looks awesome, and it's just fun to have a grenade launcher just wherever you go, just always ready. And it has the sight right, on the, right there on the top, and it's extremely effective. There's no problems with it. You're missing the most important feature. <laughs> okay, which is? And that looks wicked cool. It looks <laughs> wicked, <laughs> wicked, wicked cool. <laughs> how, good are the, how fast are these guns? Wicked fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, going back from there, I mean, going into it, you know, we were actually using pretty old mags here. Actually, this one's a newer one, but we're using some green followers. They're not the best that's one part of of you know retro guns that you know i the magazines have really gotten a whole lot better mm -hmm. so i definitely would recommend you know some of those newer magazines but that being said these did work well because we had them clean and they're we're using good ammo and stuff so that is kind of one of the the one part about retro rifles where it's like retro mags a lot of things have been done to make mags way better but mm -hmm. you know when it comes to everyone remember for a long time even me included Kind of really harped on the A2 pistol grip, but you know what? Have you grown to love it? I, you know, I talked to Tony Cowden about it. He's like, what the fuck does it matter, dude? Just be a man. Yeah, and I was like, man, yeah. sure, it's it's comfy and stuff, but it really doesn't matter, and it feels good, and it's kind of grown on me over time. I mean, these are just good, solid rifles, man. Mm. There is not a problem with going with a retro build. Um, you know, if you're chasing something brand new, maybe take a look at one of your older rifles, and if it's a classic configuration, well, yeah, I think there's almost a curve. Oh, hit me with the curve. So, I'm, oh my God, I'm so ready. So it's kind of like, um, I, you kind of look at like an older, not an older, but like a basic, basic setup out of the box from one of these big manufacturers. Is that the meme with the zoomer guy yeah, with the glasses? It's, okay, it's yeah. spot on meme, yep. right? So you have, your, you have your heat guard, you have your adjustable stock, uh -huh. like a classic M4 stock, and then yeah. you have your detachable, or like a flat rail, maybe yeah. like some random backup iron sight. Yeah. And then you can get fancy, throw in a car stock, make it look good. It's get, going up. Yeah, it's going up. Like it's to, to the top of that weird curve where it's like people think that the, the pinnacle is like anodized parts or something. <laughs> and it's like red anodized skeleton. Yeah. Uh, you know, all this crazy stuff on Mixed it. Mixed with like your Mark 18 fan bullet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then at the bottom Damn of the it, curve. Damn it, that's, a, that's yeah. a dig at me. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> And at the bottom of the curve, you had your Colt like 733 from like heat or something like that. And, it's, and that's like the wizard status like, right yeah, there. Yeah, you've achieved nirvana. Best of yeah. the best. Yeah, it, it is funny, man. It's funny how, you know, everything just kind of comes full circle. And I guess, you know, the kind of whole point of it is if you have an older gun, 
you're good to go. Yeah. And if you want to build a kind of older kind of retro style build, whether you clone it or whatever you do, um, there's a lot going for you. There, yes. There's a lot of cool, there's just a cool factor to it in my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't know. No. I, I, got, I really got nothing else to it because, it's, go ahead, man. Well, I was gonna say it still shoots bolts and it's still very much gonna kill you. That's the thing. Yeah. It, it, and everyone's, I think it's also another thing too. It's a pushback against like, that you can buy your way into being good at the rifle, right. which we yeah. know you can't, right? You can't buy your way because it, it comes down to your skill and your training with the rifle. And we both know that if you're not shooting with these, if you're not training with these, that it mm. doesn't matter at all because mm. you're gonna suck. Right. It, it's kind of like you take that guy, you know, you take two guys and one guy's all kitted out to the nines yeah. with a cool rifle, but mm -hmm. he can't shoot for nothing. And then you got the guy with a, you know, Colt, you know, whatever, art, what, 733? Yeah, some, 733 that. of the Alice gear, and he just smokes you. Just smokes you, just dead. And he loots you. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess I guess what it kind of comes down to, guys, it, is the best thing we can say about it is these guns are awesome. They're aesthetic, they rock, they look cool. Mm -hmm. But what's going to really look cool is uh, shooting well. So make sure you train. Make sure you, you know train. what I mean? Yeah. Make sure you train. Without training, none of these things matter. So get out there, get trained. Tons of great people to get training from. Who would you get training from? Well, of course, you know, our clone father, Travis Haley. Oh, Haley you can't tell that information to people. Well, they, they have to know. They have to know. They have a right to know. We, we don't have a mom. We were born in a vat. <laughs> I don't say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got them. We got Tony Cowden, who I love. Mm -hmm. um, Bear Solutions, uh, great dude, Cogworks. Tons of great guys out there with really good training. I know you trained a lot with Haley um, pretty recently, and I'm sure it probably, you got some good insights to it as well right. as having a really good impression of him. Mainly I had to study his mannerisms to work on my <laughs> Haley's or, or Travis Haley impersonation. Precisely, man. Yeah. But the point is guys, get out there, get training. That's what matters. We appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for sitting here watching our stupid videos and movies. And uh, as always guys, stay looking cool out there. We got nothing else for you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Final thing. Yeah. Um, which is, uh, you know, dad advice for the day. And I think the dad advice I want to give is uh, make sure that you are specifically dedicating time to your family, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's really easy to get so focused on your job and then you get home from your job and you're burnt out. And you're like, man, I need to decompress. And, you know, people are like, oh, I'm going to go skydiving or I'm going to go rock climbing or I'm going to play video games. And they do that. And then kind of the, the, the kind of last thing they're like, okay, at the very end of all that, after I've worked, after I've decompressed, now it's time for my family. And you know what? Um, I think maybe you need to reframe your mind a little bit and maybe, I mean, it is important to take time for yourself, but man, your family is really important. So make sure that you are specifically dedicating time to them and that you're making them important in your life because I think that's what really matters, guys. So yeah. make sure you stay cool out there. Thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate you.